Jason Bowers and his friend Lindsay are hunting the early bow season in Virginia. Jason has encouraged Lindsay to get into whitetail hunting, as last year she took her first whitetail by bow. This year, Jason might be having a rough time out, but he's determined to assist Lindsay in her pursuit of her second whitetail by bow. Will Lindsay succeed at her second year, or will she be thrown a curveball? As hunting doesn't ever go as planned. Find out this week on Red Rising. This is only my second year hunting. Um, when I met Jason, that's kind of when he got me into it. I was never a hunter growing up in my family. That's not something that we did. Um, he got me a bow for my birthday, and I absolutely loved it. Fell in love with bow hunting, and if you've never done it, I highly recommend you try bow hunting. So episode three, I'm gonna go ahead and strike a nerve right out of the gate, and it has to do with uh, supplemental feeding, baiting, what have you. Um, every state's different, every DNR sets it up differently, um, and what they wanna see happen. In Virginia, we cannot supplemental feed from September 1 through the first Saturday in January. After the first Saturday in January, the end of August, hey, we can supplemental feed, and we do do that. And, this year is no different. It's a process. We want to see what deer we have and we inventory. We like to put minerals out throughout the summer because you know everything they need is in those minerals. They're craving a lot of things. And if you get close enough to a batch of group of bucks, they will come day after day after day and you can inventory them. We also want to see what that particular deer or several particular deer did from the year before. So as they go from three years old to maybe four years old, how big of a jump did they make? All right, this is a spot that I love. If it's an acorn year, it produces every single year. If it's dropping acorns on this ridge, I guarantee you there is gonna be a shooter here. Can't wait to hunt this. This right here is a killing tree. I know we say it over and over, but that is part of being a successful white hunter, in my opinion, is finding the right tree. And this right here, this is a killing tree right here. They got a lot of cameras. We gotta take a lot of inventory, find out what we have to hunt, if we have anything. We've done our research, we've had cameras running pretty much all summer long, going into fall, and I know there's a couple of deer here that I wanna hunt. Jason's Browning trail camera is seeing this buck named Mr. Scissors. And another buck named Pretty Boy has also been sighted in Jason's neighborhood. Cool. Look at the box down there, dude. Pretty dang crazy. My house is just right there, 100 yards. We've got these two deer. Um, Lindsay calls one of them pretty boy, one of them wide lug, another one trashy. Um, Eric and I was just out scouting this evening and looking, and it's got foggy. Hurricane Irma's here. Literally just drove on the back side of my street, and there was like six or seven bucks right there, and the two big ones were fighting. Um, in town. In town. Just true is. urban hunting. Yeah, and, and both of them are really good deer for deer. So it just absolutely blows my mind where these deer live and how easy they can hide from people. 
Oh, but we have a plan. <laughs> oh yeah, I've always got a plan. <laughs> Whether or not it works out or not, that's a different story. But I always have a plan. Make sure you subscribe and like the page. On top of that, make sure you click the little notification bell. That way you'll be one of the first ones to know when a new video drops. Sometimes things do happen for a reason. You know, we lost our access to this property, but maybe it was a blessing in disguise because now we have access. We had to work a little harder, but now we have access and it is 100% bulletproof. It is a little harder to get on top of this ridge, but it is a 10 times better access than what we had before. As a whitetail hunter, this is what we dream of the entire off season. This is the first time I've got to sit in a tree at home. This is my comfort zone. This is where I'm comfortable. This is where, this is what makes me happy. This could be one of the funniest things that I've ever witnessed from a tree. Guy has came in on the property adjacent to us. No clue we're here. He's climbed a climber up in the tree and he just dropped his bow out of the stand, climbed back down, got his bow and climbed back up. Oh, and did I mention it's literally 30 minutes before dark. This is real life. This is real stuff. You can't make this up. It is too good. No, everybody isn't gonna think we're making it up, but we're not, I promise. Welcome to Virginia, folks. My experience, the guys that drop their bows out of the stand and climb down and get it 30 minutes before dark are the guys that end up killing the booners. I just don't understand it. To get in the tree stand of the afternoon, you get everything set right, and then you look over literally an hour and a half before dark, and here comes your neighbor to climbing up in the tree. You know, hey man, maybe he had to work late and that's as quick as he can get in there, but um, I tell you, it's, it never ceases to amaze me what you have to put in to get out of uh, a successful hunt, and um, you know, it's one of them deals, Jason's struggling, and I, this deer right now is getting the best of us. It is our second time in this spot. I'm curious if our buddy's gonna come back. <laughs> It stands still at the base of the tree. I'm filming myself this afternoon. I have no clue how I just got away with this. I walked all the way in, climbed up the tree, put the camera arm up, got everything ready, and I turn around and I see a deer bedded. I can't see what it is. I can tell it's a big deer, and all of a sudden I see it is the deer that I'm in here hunting. I just have climbed up in this stand, and the deer that I'm after called Mr. Scissors is bedded 50 yards right here. Holy crap. All I gotta do now is just wait. Well, that was a long standoff for nothing. I have no clue what just happened. The wind is still good. Can't really see it, but it's blowing the opposite direction of where he was at. We targeted this deer and we had a goal with the bulletproof access to get into this property now. We're gonna hunt and hunt and we're gonna grind on this deer just like it's the rut until we get him killed. What happens next leaves Jason frustrated. He's going to have his friend Lindsey hunt after a buck named Pretty Boy. And unfortunately, Pretty Boy got hit by a car on the highway near Jason's house. That's a, <laughs> that right there is a sad feeling. Um, makes me sick to my stomach. I literally just live probably 100, 150 yards through the woods right here, and it's unfortunate. It's right here on the four lane, the main road coming through town. Um, this is actually a big eight pointer that we've got pictures of. We watched him all summer. Uh, we caught him pretty boy. Uh, actually, Eric and I filmed him right here the other night, sparring with another buck. But I had a game plan together. I had the property on both sides of the road to hunt. That was actually a deer Lindsay was wanting to kill. Uh, just a big, big eight pointer for here, and I know it's him, I mean, buddies on the fire department town cop here uh, our city cop he called and said that, that big 80 got hit but so uh, hmm it's just the the law of averages are against him how many times has that dude crossed this road in the last four or five years and sickening Lindsay 
I had no idea what she was in for. I'm not gonna beat a dead horse to death. We talked about it in the past. Early season, what we like to key in on is mass crop, whether it be soft mass and apples, pears. But what we really like to do is if we get a year when we have a decent acorn crop, man, we hone in. We start finding acorn flats that we have consistently had success on year after year after year. We find individual trees, whether they're scarlet oaks or white oaks, depending on which you know species is dropping better that year or did better production-wise during the summer. And this was one of those examples I mean, Jason goes in, he identifies some scarlet oaks dropping, a couple white oaks, and I mean, man, we know if we just ride this spot, somebody's going to get lucky. And um, sometimes it takes taking somebody like Lindsay, and uh, that's all you need uh, to change the game. We need you to support us, guys. So go over, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And every time we post something, you're going to get that little bell going off, and you're going to know instantly that you can go over and watch it and catch what's going on. Lindsay loves to bow hunt. This is the first opportunity she's had to go, first evening she's had to go. So you know what? We're gonna jump in the truck, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna climb on top of this mountain and we're gonna get on this ridge. And sometimes you just gotta change things up and see if you can switch your luck around. Going into the same spot where I killed my deer last year. Mine, pretty boy, is got hit by a car, so no luck there. So Jason's nice enough to let me hunt one of his. Um, hopefully, we'll get a big buck down. Okay, turn that off for a second because I don't want to talk anymore. Well. Last year, Lindsay was hunting for her first deer kill ever by bow. Lucky for Lindsay, this eight-point Virginia buck shows up and gives her a clean shot at him. Yes! I did it! I did it! This is my first kill ever with the bow. This eight-pointer. This is like my fifth time bow hunting. And killed this monster. So I'm going in to hunt a spot that Jason's been hunting this year. Um, not really knowing what to expect. He says he's got some good deer out there and I'm still pretty bummed about my deer getting hit. I'm hoping to get something. I don't know what though. Pretty boy was a deer that I was watching and um, with hopes on killing and he got hit by a car. And within five minutes, somebody went and chopped his forehead off. It's awful. Yeah, it's awful. It's really awful. So now I have no deer that I'm really after. So we're just winging it. We've not been in the stand five minutes, and I look up and there's deer pouring out from everywhere. So I go in and I'm trusting him, and out comes Mr. Susan. And all of a sudden, the deer I've been hunting walks right out of the laurels and is coming straight towards us. Yeah. and I was not expecting him to be as big as he was. I tell Lindsay to get her bow, and she has no clue why. I mean, we've not been in the stand 10 minutes, and I tell her, get your bow, and she's like, why, why, I'm like, get your bow, here comes the shooter. So the deer feeds all the way up and gets within about 35 yards of us and just beds down. Subscribe to our channel, like it, you're gonna get that little notification bell, it's gonna go off, let you know when something new hits. Follow, subscribe. Happy hunting this fall, we love everybody. Thank you again.
We've not been in the stand five minutes. Out comes Mr. Scissors. So the deer feeds all the way up and gets within about 35 yards of us and just beds down. We've been watching this deer for probably 45 minutes. He's bedded out in the sun, laying under an oak tree. And I keep telling Lindsay, just be patient because when he gets up, he's going to do one of two things. He's either going to walk right by us or either he's going to walk back down the hill. And either way he goes, she's going to have a perfect shot. After 45 minutes, this deer finally gets up, gets on his feet. And you know what? He's feeding straight to the stand. The deer finally clears and gets in the open. And I look down at Lindsay and I can literally see her shaking. She had no clue this deer was as big as what it really was. This could not have been scripted any better. I mean, this deer literally read the script. He gets up, walks right under the stand, eight yards. I'm trying to film, I'm watching Lindsay, and I'm trying to watch the deer. She goes to draw back. He comes out, he's like eight yards. I try to draw, it's perfect timing, and I can't even draw. If you're a whitetail hunter, you've had buck fever at some point in your hunting career. I'm shaking so bad, I can't even pull my bow back. And I see Lindsay go to draw as the deer steps behind a limb, and she gets stuck right in mid-draw and lets it back down. And it's an old crap moment, now what do I do? All of a sudden the deer freezes, looks up, and I'm just literally like, oh crap. The deer chills out, puts his head back down, takes three more steps. I'm able to finally pull my bow back and draw. But now she's got her bow, she's at full draw, and pretty much the rest is history. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> the angle, the angle's worried me. I didn't think it was a good shot, but fortunately for me, it actually turned out to be good enough. That was a heck of a shot. It was a great hunt. Um, now you know what buck fever is. You got super excited, but you kept your composure and you made it happen. That was Mr. Scissors and he is dead. <laughs> Do you know what's gonna be crazy? What? I bet you money I've got him on this wide angle tactic cam too above your head. You drawing him under you, everything. Oh, I couldn't draw right there. I, it was at all I had in me. Her reactions are priceless. I love them. She gets so excited, so nervous. And, and once she gets down on the ground, it's, it's like a kid in a candy store. I love watching Lindsay on film. And uh, I tell you, she is really starting to impress me with her bow skills. Backed out, went and got Eric, we went and got some dinner. We waited about five hours, so we're gonna slip back in and go find this deer. That's that's the, one of the number one mistakes somebody can make is if you hit a deer a little back, don't don't go running after them because you'll push them and push them and push them. If you just let them go, they'll just go literally 100 yards and expire. But um, I'm very confident this deer is gonna be laying down here, so this is gonna be funny. We need the deer meat. We're out, and we don't wanna we don't wanna wait all night and let that meat waste, so. Like I said, all week, I mean, it's been super hot this week. Um, typically, we wait till morning, but it's just, it's hot and the deer is going to spoil, so we're not going to let that happen. We're going to go ahead and find him. Come here, bro. You gotta figure out how to get to it, man. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Check oh my, he's huge. Okay, <laughs> it's dead, it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's really dead. Yeah, it's dead, it's, it's not going Oh, nowhere. they're so long, it's bubbling. Is it? Oh, its head is so hard. It can't even pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I killed it. You what? Mr. Scissorhands, his life is officially over. All right, how do we get it out? You gotta drag it. That's on you. Ride it like a horse out. I don't think you're gonna ride that one like a horse out of here. That is a pain point. That ain't a good twos. Look how long them twos are. Huh.
I came in here hunting the other day, and this was one of the deer that I was actually trying to kill, but he was bedded down when I got in a stand, and I watched him for over an hour. Something happened, spooked him. Worked out for the best because I am, um, I am <laughs> happier that she shot him than if I had shot him. I just killed the biggest year of my life with a bow, and I couldn't be more excited. Holy cow. What? I killed this. You did kill that bitch. You did, you killed it. Tenderloin party. We're gonna smoke a tenderloin. That is 100% the truth. Shoot, it's really stinky. Hey, don't shoot your guts next time. You still have that. <laughs> I don't like you guys. Yeah, you do. <laughs> so even why. Guts. I still think there was some a little long. There was 100%. There was a little long. bit. That's not going to be nothing. All right. Yeah, I like it from this angle. Do you? Oh, right. <laughs>